All right, now we're gonna continue on the weight painting process by working on this neck. So we can look at it and see that there are five different sections. One thing I wanna point out when you are doing weight painting for something like this, let me open up the tools again. You wanna make sure that you have some kind of systematic formula for doing so. Uh, unfortunately, in many cases, people will, if I grab this, we'll just come in and I wanna, here, let me lower that opacity down. I'll just paint a little here and here and maybe a little here and then I'll switch to the head and I'll paint a little here and here. And unfortunately, that produces spotty results. If you wanna do it in a way that's gonna be efficient, you once again need a systematic approach. So I'm gonna approach it that way. And there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it by flooding by section by percentages, or you can uh, paint the weights. And there is room for experimentation, but you wanna make sure that as you paint the weights for something like this, that it's even across that edge loop and that things bend in the way that they need to. So for example, this bottom edge loop down here, I'm gonna come here and actually select it, select all these vertices. And be careful, if you marquee select, it's not gonna work. It'll actually prioritize the, the joints instead. So that's why I individually selected those vertices. But I wanna come back here and to the chest um, or to the origin, I can use either because they're in a non-moving portion. I want to do a 100% flood, which is actually the value here. But I wanna completely flood that. The reason why is because as the neck bends, I don't ever want that part to leave the body. Otherwise, we get that horrible gap that people can see through. So that's always going to be in place. I then want the next deformations going up the neck chain to be influenced by both this neck rotation as well as uh, the body, uh, so from the chest so that there's a gradual deformation away from the chest. I don't necessarily want the bottom being influenced by the head. I'm gonna save the top two loops for that kind of a handoff. And so once again, just kind of thinking through the process of where you want the transitions to come from and what you want to influence them, you can start making decisions. What I'm gonna do first of all though, is I'm going to fill these in 100% with the things that I, I know I want to have uh, as part of this transition. So I'm gonna do the handoff between this middle ring and the, the fourth ring up. So this bottom ring, well, no, I'll do all three right now and then we can transition gradually. So if I grab those three rings, and once again, making sure I don't marquee over a joint so it doesn't pull that, I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to select the neck and do a flood. I'm then going to select the top of this ring, or the topmost ring of this. When I say ring, I mean edge loop. Uh, the topmost edge loop. And I will attach this to the head for the same reason I, I attach the base of the neck uh, to the body because when the head moves, I don't want the neck to separate from it. So I will flood that. So now what I've got is I've got this that doesn't move at the base, the center moves hard, and then the top is attached into the head right there without any adjustments. All right, so now let's look at a little bit of the deformations that need to go into this. So once again, I, I really want this second ring, or the second edge loop right here to not yet be influenced by the head. Um, and I think I do want the head to influence all the way down to this third edge loop as I'm messing with it. But this is one of those nice things. As long as I've got a formula, I can work at this and develop it. So this one I'm gonna influence simply by using the flood command, but by doing a partial flood so that I can show a little bit better how this is gonna work. So if I come to this chest piece, and I can see that there's 100% influence on the neck right there. What I can try doing is I'm doing the handoff from the chest piece right here. And so I may do it at an opacity of 50%, or excuse me, not that opacity, and that would be 500, uh, which doesn't work. So I will do the value at 0.5, which is the 50%, and flood it. 
Ah, but I have the problem. I selected it by the loop, not by the vertices. So let me uh, grab those very quickly and come back and make sure that these other ones are not accidentally selected. All right, and now I can do that 50% flood. And I need to remember to uh, increase that opacity up to one and then the value for the flood will be at 0.5. So there we go. So now when I try and go in and bend it, it's got a little bit more of a gradient where it's partially influenced by that chest. All right. But then I want to start the handoff to the head. Obviously that top uh, edge loop uh, is going to be 100% the top of this head. The next one I want to have a, a gradual transition between the neck and the head and then the bottom I want it to be more towards the neck. So I can experiment with this. I'm going to start this by doing uh, let's see, come over here, and I'm going to select the head right now, and I want to bring in, let's say, uh, a value of 0.3, and I will flood, and then for that next edge loop up, Well, this one I'm going to paint by hand so you get the idea. So for this, I'm going to change this opacity to 0.3. And I am going to select, oh, and making sure that I don't mess this up. Let me select that, paint, okay. Uh, I'm now going to select, uh, well, keep the head selected but then I can come in and paint. And right now if I try and paint, it's gonna go a little bit over the top. Um, so for example, if I increase this up to 100, you see how it's hitting a lot of different vertices. Um, in some cases, I can make this work. So if I come down to the stroke, I can change the scale of this brush. So for example, I can lower that to 0.25 and you see that now I've got more of a contained area. So if I come in and if I'm not clicking repeatedly or if you're using a stylus, you're not lifting up and doing it again, I can do this one at a time to try and get that. And let me correct this again. Let me make that value one, the opacity one. And you see as I go back and forth while still holding it down, then it caps it out. Or I can also, uh, in this case, I want to make it 0.7. So that one, it had 30% influence. This one, I want it to have 70% influence, which will knock the next neck joint uh, down to a 30% influence on this edge loop. And I can do this one at a time, but if I want to be a, a little bit more careful, I can once again isolate my selection. Oh, go to vertex. can grab these three remaining vertices, go to paint mode, and then even if my brush is large, I simply come in and as long as I don't lift up or click repeatedly, um, then it gets that even coat. And so you can see that I'm able to make decisions that very much form how this is going to uh, blend and form and work. So now if I try and rotate it, you can see where the deformations are coming in. And I'm not entirely happy with this. There's too much of a change for me from that bottom piece down to here and not enough of an influence from the neck on the sections up above. So this is where we can work back and forth a little bit to try and get something that works. Uh, once again, I could uh, just manually come in and start painting it by eye and uh, guessing. So let me shrink that down to 0.25 again. 
And I may do something like, great, I'll do this at a 0.25 here for the opacity um, to get a better feel for how I want things to work. And so I can actually come in and add a little bit of influence on all of these. But once again, I'm not just doing a joint or a vertice here and a vertice there. I'm trying to make sure that this is even so that it gets that nice gradation as it's coming down and as things are going up. As I check some of the other joints, I can also see how those are working. So, for example, if I check the chest, I can see that it's only got the influence to there, which is really all I want. Um, but I want it to have a little less influence on this. So I'm going to come back and select the head or excuse me, the neck, and I want that to start ex influence, or exerting just a little more influence down lower. And so I will build these up so that I'm developing a, a process for how that gradation works. Now this still may not be exactly where I want it, but you see how it's much, much smoother now. And so what I encourage you to do is play around with it a bit and find something that works for you. Play with some of the settings, try painting, try um, doing floods, but work within a system. Uh, try and figure out exactly how you're gonna get the gradients, how you're gonna get them going through the edge loops so that it can be a lot more clean as you're creating these deformations. And so this is a place where it feels a lot better and so even as I go side to side or anything else, and you probably don't want the head going that far, um, but you see that there's a, a decent amount of movement within the head and there's some nice deformation in there so it doesn't pinch too much, doesn't have sections pop, and it feels a lot better. So I'll step back from there. But that's uh, a couple of ways of approaching this. Just anytime you do weight painting, it's not good to have it random. You, you want to develop some kind of a system for how you're going to set up the, the transitions between the joint influences. Um, with that, the robot is now rigged. Uh, the weights have been painted. And we're ready to move on to the final portion. Uh, in the final portion, we're going to set up IK handles. We're going to set up uh, locators and... Uh, get everything kind of polished and finished off. And so I will once again grab this, save it, and stop the video here, and we'll come back in the next one.